Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to discuss about interview questions on data pages on marking first year anniversary in YouTube. Let's get started into the topic. So we know that database is one of the rules that we have in Pega and uh, those are visible under records, data model, data page and you can see the instance of data page. Now I have listed down few queries for this video and I will be taking you through those. First question like how many modes of data pages we have. So if you see here, this is data page definition. If you see here, there is a mode, read only, editable and saveable. Only data page, it's like uh, data is loaded into the data page and you can't modify that while you were uh, doing some transactions. An editable data page where you can update the values on the data page and this is saveable. For saveable mode of data page, you can check out my last video. And how many scopes of data page we have. As we know that you can see here scope we have request a scope if we have mode as saveable. Suppose it is read only data page means we have three scopes. Based on the mode, your scope will be changed. As I have said, read only data page is like uh, we load the data once and uh, we won't do any modification. We will be having some node uh, level scope. But for the remaining two, as the user can edit on the respective session, we don't have that uh, scope. What is refresh strategy in data pages? So if you see here in the load management, you can see here clear data page. So you have loaded some content into the data page and you want to update the values. So this here you can't see any refresh strategy. Why? Because this is a thread level data page. Suppose if I give read only data page and scope as thread request or not any one of this. And if you go to load management, you can see here refresh strategy. And you can see here read or load once per transaction. Otherwise, you don't want to reload for a few instances. Otherwise, you want to specify some dates like after 12 days or uh, your data page is older than some 12 days or some 100 days, something like that. You want to refresh this, then uh, based on this, a back end, a respective process will be enabled. So after these 12 days, this particular data page would be executed again and the source will be updated again with the latest data. Okay, and this is node. And if you see here, for load authorization, you have some access group. Because as it is a node level data page, we know that node level data page would be accessed by all the type of users and all the type of requesters in the application. So if we have provided uh, for everyone to update the database, it would be a risk for our application. So we can restrict that with the access group. Next, what is key page access in data page? Next, in definition, if you go, if you see here, if it is editable database, you can't see anything here. Or if it is saveable database, you can't see anything here. Suppose it's a read-only database, you can see here key page access. So what is this key page access is? We have a textbook and you know that uh, in the textbook, if you know the serial number, you would be going directly to that. Through index, you can see like, okay, this topic is there in some 15th page. So you will go just go to 15th page and you will get the content. Suppose if you don't know what is the index of the respective topic, then you have to go to the entire textbook and you will be sitting in the time waste for some time and you will get the content. So to override these kind of things, like it's a naive example, but this one in data page context, if you know keys already, you can just define those on your data page. And if you want to allow multiple pages per key, you can select this, otherwise no need of this. So now I have given as capture ID property. So you can see the properties that are there under this particular class. Now if I give an identity ID, so when I'm executing this data page, I have to pass this parameter as this identifier ID. Then the data page, as it is a read only, the data page is already loaded. So when I have passed key as identity ID, suppose I123, so it will just go very fast and it will check I123 and it will give the data much faster.
This is about key page access. Where data page is used. We know that data pages are used uh, in flows, activities, data transforms and all. You can uh, browse yourself and you can understand more about this. What is Apple data page? Again, I am just uh, reiterating that I have already uploaded a video against this. And what is limit to single data page option? Suppose in this particular option, I have said like you have loaded uh, two records now and if you give this option like restrict this to single uh, page means next time when you pass a new key the old value suppose you have already loaded i123 with some records there are two records for that always one record next time when you pass i456 then there will be another entry like i456 now due to this our clipboard size is getting increased to make this like only at a time only one source is there then you have to give this option. For this option, you have to browse in the data pages and you have to comment on this video where you can find this single page context. And how to remove idle pages of data page from clipboard? Simple, here you have to select structure as page and select mode as read only and scope as thread or request or more, whatever it is. And if you go to load management, you can see here clear pages after non use. You can just hover over it. You can see when the pages are added, it will be removed automatically. Next, uh, how do you simulate data source in a data page? See, a data page can have different sources like, like here, connector, data transfer, report definition, lookup activity, or robotic automation or aggregate sources. So if you see here on the right hand side, you can see simulate data transform. So this simulation, uh, suppose the end system is not ready, but you want to know the behavior of this data page. So you want to hard code some values. Suppose for example, I'm looking for a report definition here and there are no instances over here, but I want to check how this data page is working. So I don't want to waste time until someone creates case and some instances should be loaded on that. Then if I go to simulate data source, I can write a data transform. Here also you have, when you click on simulate, you can see here, report definition lookup or activity. Now I have selected some data transform means in this data transform, I can hard code some values and I can give the respect to hard coded values as a source to this data page. Next, what is enable lightweight clipboard mode in data page? So here if you see, if I click editable or savable, savable I don't have an option. If I click editable, I can see here enable lightweight clipboard mode. It actually gives you better throughput. So on the clipboard, the data will be loaded based on this uh, respective option. What is allow API query option? Suppose you have a, a user interface where you are sourcing from data page and that data page is uh, supposed to uh, some connector or some other thing and you know right there is a concept called as pagination like at a time we will be uh, defining like 15 records should be shown so if you click on next again 15 records should be shown so the pagination concept is there so instead of loading all the records at a time if you give uh, this option they uh, like progressively the lower data will be loaded on your data page. Yeah, it can be found here like a structure should be list and more should be read only and scope is thread and uh, you uncheck the similar data source and go to load management and you can see here allow API query and you can see here for data pages that you use the source as grid select the API query checkbox to enable paging on the server itself. This actually improves performance and memory use by enabling the data page to load and store only rows in the grid. So these are the most frequently asked questions uh, in data page. If you come up with some other interesting questions that you have faced during your interviews, please uh, comment on this video. So it will be very useful for all the viewers and all the people. Thanks everyone for making this channel more successful. Please subscribe, share, like and comment on the videos and provide feedback.